seven or eight minutes there as well. Uh, we'll open, we'll uh, uh, same thing if you can state your name and your organization. And we'll open up the questions with uh, Bill Rabinowitz. Bill? Yeah, we've had a great battle at the right tackle position uh, all during training camp. Um, Reed Fragel, Taylor Decker there, we think uh, both can be really good players for us. Reed is just a little bit ahead, and so he'll get the nod for this Saturday as a starter. Uh, anticipate Taylor being in the game, playing, contributing, and he would be the first guy in the game at right tackle or left tackle Taylor, so he works both sides, so he's kind of our swing guy, so he would be our third tackle right now, but uh, still a, a very close race there in terms of there is a lot of separation there, just reads older and, and a little more veteran and uh, just a little more ready to go. Back left, Jared. Uh, yeah, Jared's Jared. volume is equal. Uh, Urban raves about Corey Lindsley, and he's done it for a while. What, what is, I think, from your first experience to him, with him to now, what is so different about Corey? What has made him a, a better player and a better leader? Well, I think uh, the thing that Corey's done is that he's, you know, accepted the new regime, accepted the way that the program is run, and really embraced it. And he's a very hard worker. He's totally committed a, a turnaround in his life and so forth in terms of, you know, the past and moving forward. Um, a very blue-collar guy that, you know, just trains hard in the weight room, practices hard, very physical. And so he's more of a leader by uh, his example of great effort, great energy, uh, competitor. And he's playing really well, too, I mean, besides that fact. Uh, and so, you know, you just like a guy who comes in and says, hey, whatever you want me to do, whatever I need to do, whatever changes are made, there's no, you know, looking back. So, I mean, pretty pleased with that. And uh, he's a center, so he makes a lot of decisions. And making those decisions are important. And he's done a good job with learning the system and spent a lot of time extra on his own working on things, film, studying. So, uh, you know, just... He's totally embraced the new offense and his role and done a great job with it. Right front here, Tim. Tim, Tim. right close. How are you doing, man? Good. Uh, you know, Urban was talking earlier about in, on, on that all access thing and then a while ago about sort of like a culture change a little bit from an offensive standpoint of not accepting uh, we'll punt right now and get back at him next time. How did you get that across to your offensive line that uh, more the urgency aspect of things from the offensive st side, uh, standpoint? Well, it's just the approach that we take uh, every day in everything we do. I mean, we're not, uh, we're going to try to be the aggressor on offense and not just try to ease our way into it and see what the defense does, and then we'll try to play off of that. We're going to try to take the game to people, be aggressive. And, uh, you know, our tempo helps us do that. Uh, our commitment that, you know, a drive isn't successful unless we can get it into position to score. You know, just things like that, really pushing pushing the guys to have high standards, you know, that. Uh, did, yeah, did y'all, since y'all needed to do that too, though, did it? Did you need that little bit of a kick in the rear end for the offense? Oh, I think so. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, there, there needs to be a transformation there from previous, a new style, new way of doing business, uh, new philosophy, and, uh, you know, hopefully, like I said, an aggressive approach in all phases, run, pass, game, and attacking people and uh, saying, hey, you know, we're coming after you. Back left, Lori. Lori Schmidt, 97.1 The Fan. How much of that, uh, we're not going to react to what they do, is a function of that being your philosophy, and how much of that is a function of it being this time of year when you might not know as much about an opponent? So, well, well, yeah, I think that... Uh, I think my point in saying that is you always react as a coach as the game progresses to what a defense does, but you don't ease into it. We're not going to ease into games where we're just going to come out and just, you know, pound a few up the middle and be real conservative and then kind of see how they're playing us and then we'll start to pick it up after that. I mean, that's not going to be our approach at all. I mean, we're going to come out and go play fast and, and go play hard. Um, so, you know, I think that some of the things that playing an opponent – that has a new defensive coordinator, 
that you haven't played that you don't have game film on except from last year and with a new coordinator, there can be and probably will be some changes. So yeah, we have to be really sharp as coaches to sideline adjustments and what they, what we project them to do might be different than what they actually do. We'll adjust to that as quickly as we can on the fly, but we're not going to go into it with a ease our way into it approach. Left front, Rusty. Uh, Rusty Miller, AP. I'm just wondering, did you have to overcome a certain hesitance on the upperclassmen in particular who had done things a certain way for a long time? It's only natural for people to get into a routine and think, well, this is the way we do things. And I am assuming that you wanted the new offense, new approach, new attack, new way of thinking. Did you have to kind of pull them away from that holding on to what they've been done in the past? We didn't feel that at all. We didn't feel like there was a, a strong resistance in changing the culture of how we were going to play football on offense. Uh, I think the kids embraced it. I think they understood the you know, success that Coach Meyer had had and his, that his offensive system has worked well everywhere he's been, that uh, you know, maybe based on the previous year change was needed and that it was time and let's, let's all dive in feet first and go. And I think everybody did. I think I don't think anybody. I didn't feel any resistance from our quarterback, our offensive line, any of our players. I mean, most of them uh, were pretty excited about it. I mean, the fact that maybe we'll run 20, 25 more plays on offense with some tempo. Maybe you know the ball will be thrown a little bit more and be spread around. You know, just a whole different excitement to the offense. So uh, I think the players have raced it and uh, have really been good. And I, and just coaching my position in particular. Obviously, completely different schemes and techniques, and there wasn't any pushback on law. Well, I started here in the last two years. This is how I do my, do this. And there wasn't any of that at all. Those guys were completely uh, great group of guys to work with and very flexible in terms of, hey, just tell us what you need us to do, and we'll do it as hard as we can. So appreciate their efforts, and I think that's going to be a, a reason we have some success. Middle left, Brandon. Hi, Coach. Uh, Brandon Castell with the Arizona. Um, Coach Meyer and Coach Herman have been a little bit more critical throughout the camp of the offense and how quickly it's coming along or how ready it is, I think. We're, from your standpoint, how ready Critical in what regard? Just saying things like uh, if they, they, might, they hope they feel good in two weeks. This is only, you know, two weeks before the season. They don't feel as good as they would like to necessarily two weeks going you know, two weeks before the season. I just wanted to get your thoughts on is that how do you feel about the offense at this point now that you're in the first game making? Where have you seen the biggest strides in this in, in fall camp in particular? Well, I think uh, our receiving core has made great strides. I mean, I think those guys are really, you know, taking the challenge there. And uh, so as we progress along, you know, our passing game, I think, continues to improve the development of our quarterback in that passing game and our receivers. And they're, you know, they're very comfortable together. I think they're starting to get in sync. I think uh, guys are showing who can make plays. So I think that's come along. I mean, I think that that's a work in progress, and maybe two weeks ago it wasn't quite where you would like it to be. But we're, we have a high bar, too, so, I mean, you know, we're never going to be really satisfied. But I think uh, in all aspects I, I see great improvement. And, you know, I think we just want to be able to be strong and have balance that we want to be able to run the football effectively and throw it effectively. And if we can do both those things, we can keep people on defense off balance. And I think it's coming along well. And I think our players are uh, will put a good product on the field. And I think they'll play hard. And I think that people will like what they see. Middle, Dave. Hi, Ed. Right here in the middle. Dave Metzl from WTVN Radio. Uh, you've addressed this in, in several different ways. I, I don't know if you're familiar or not, but the, uh, the one unit that seems to be criticized more here at Ohio State than any other is the offensive line. So I think really? you're getting ahead of it a little bit. In case you didn't know that. Uh, is, is this just a quicker unit up front? Is it a more physical unit up front? Because people tend to jump on that real quick. Is it, is it more physical, smash mouth, to use a old cliche? I mean, how would you describe the way you, you want guys me to compare go? it to previous? Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily, but if you'd like to, that's fine. No, I have no, <laughs> I have no intention of doing <laughs> comparing it. Uh, I only know from when I got here, you know, January 1st till today. I mean, it's just improved in a lot of different areas. Uh, one, the strength and conditioning of that group, great effort in practice, uh, totally committed in the weight room in the off season to doing things we need them to do, practicing very hard, um, and practicing the entire practice hard, not picking their 
spots where they practice. I just think the development of that's been critical. Like I said, that group's really, you know, open their chest and said, hey, coach me, tell us what you need us to do, tell us how you want us to do it, and we'll go do it. Uh, I, I think that they have some quickness to them. I think we have a group that's pretty athletic. I mean, our, our left tackle and our right tackle are real good athletes. You know, Marcus Hall's come on, Corey Lindsley, as we've already talked about, and then Norwell's probably the guy that's played the most in there, and uh, he's really uh, become quicker and more athletic. Just from training hard and getting himself in shape and all that. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I think we can do a little bit of both. I think we have some a little more athleticism maybe than when I started here in January just from the training and the conditioning. And I think they're strong and powerful, and I think they'll play hard. So, hopefully we can be both in there. Two more questions. Austin? On Austin, right. Austin Ward, ESPN.com. You referenced getting Decker involved in some capacity. Is that something that you would – script for a game? Does it depend on just how it plays out on Saturday? How do you, how do you get him involved? Well, I want to get him in the game, and so, I mean, you know, I'll pick out a spot early on where I'm going to put him in the game, and unless, you know, they punt the ball to us and we're coming off the two-yard line, I might not put him in there for that being his first play of his college career, but, you know, if we have decent field position and it's early in the game, and you know, we have a decent feel for what they're doing defensively. I'll throw them in there. I mean, because I, I trust him and we trust him, and he, he'll be a good player for us. He'll play all year. It's sort of a continuation of that battle. Then you maybe want to see them get game reps and continue to monitor how both Decker and Fragel are handling that position out there. Yeah, it's a fluid situation. I mean, you know, if uh, one guy doesn't play well and the other one does, then that'll change next week how we go. But. Uh, I anticipate them both playing pretty well, so uh, I just think you got to be ready with three tackles there and getting them game experience when we can. So, and, and we don't see a big drop off at all, you know. So, as a matter of fact, you know, there are certain strengths that one has that the other doesn't, vice versa. So, I don't, I'm not going to go into what those are, but uh, they're not mirrored players by any means. Last question for our right, Aaron. Coach Aaron Goldstein, WBNS TV. With all the new faces on the offensive line, do you envision that it could take a few weeks into the season for them to really gel as a group and, and come together? I don't think so. I hope not. But uh, I think that process is because we've been pretty uh, consistent with who's been in there. I think that we targeted the right guys early on and we picked the right people to play the right spots because there's a lot of guys moved around to different positions. And we really feel comfortable with where they are. They practice together. So I think the continuity there will come. I mean, I think the big thing is just getting confidence for these guys, you know. I mean, I think that's the thing that uh, playing well and having some success brings is confidence. And uh, I think they have some confidence going into the first game, though. So I feel good about it. Coach, thank you very much. Coach Adam has got his hand in here. We're okay. going to have Coach Warner.